Hey guys, and happy Monday. We are in the beginning of week two. This is like my third time making this video. Um, they're a little bit, in order for me to go over everything, they're too long. And I know you don't wanna hear me talk for that long. So what I'm going to do is this video is gonna go over chapter seven of The Everyday Writer and Ode to the Women on Long Island. Um, and then I'm gonna go over PSA blogs and do a trial PSA blog since I know a lot of you guys have questions about those. Um, so that will be this video. I'll upload a separate one on Wednesday or Thursday that goes over learning to read, autobiography and literacy narratives and the literacy narrative assignment. Um, but for now, let's just focus on these first three and I'm gonna minimize my face. I'm just gonna exit out of my face. Okay, so some reminders and tips for this week. If you haven't already, you must read slash watch. One, the syllabus has a lot of really important information on there. Two, the welcome video and presentation that I made, that's under course content. And then week one, unit one, read and review. Um, in that video is an introduction video of me introducing myself to you guys and an introductory survey that I really need you guys to fill out um, so that I can get to know you better. Um, and then the week one overview is under unit one, week one. Um, if you email me and ask me any questions that are in these, I'm going to kindly and lovingly refer you to these first because they answer a lot of questions that you guys probably have and give you a lot of important information for starting the semester. Um, I also made a Blackboard tutorial video under course content in case you're having trouble navigating our Blackboard site. Um, I highly suggest familiarizing yourself with Blackboard. If, even if you haven't used it before, it is confusing, but if you go under each of your courses and just click around for a little bit, you'll get used to it really fast and you'll know where everything is located. Um, another suggestion I have is looking ahead each week at how long each week's readings are so you can plan and manage your time accordingly. Some weeks our readings will be shorter, so they'll be short stories or poems. Other weeks they, they are from the textbook and they're a little bit longer. So to make sure that you're doing the readings and submitting your assignments on time, look ahead and see how long the readings are. Okay. And then... Uh, this is a picture of what to do this week. Again, this is in Blackboard under Unit 1, Week 2. It has a list of everything that you need to read and review, all the things that you need to write and respond to, and then the due dates for all of those. So as you can see, the first PSA blog, if you want to do it, um, is due tonight by 11.59 p.m. So some of you have emailed with questions about the PSA blogs, so I thought it'd be good to make a distinction between those and your weekly discussion posts and responses. So as the syllabus says, you have to complete five PSA blogs throughout the semester before finals weeks. You can do these whenever you want to. It's your choice what weeks you want to do a PSA blog for. Um, however, what is important is there are due dates each week. So what you want to do is go to this calendar for the corresponding week that you wanna do a PSA blog, and then check and make sure when it is due. Um, the folder to submit that blog to too also tells you which reading you need to do a PSA blog for. So just remember that it's your choice when you want to do them, um, but you do need to go look and see what specific reading it wants you to respond to and when it's due. Um, I also would recommend keeping track of how many and which ones you did throughout the semester so you know how many you need to be doing. Um, the discussion board posts are due every single week, as are the responses. Um, so again, when you go to this calendar, it'll tell you when your initial post is due. Um, so for instance, this Wednesday by 11.59, and then when your responses are due. And make sure that you're checking this every week because sometimes these days are different. Okay, so how to complete a PSA blog. Um, under Blackboard for this week, Read and Respond, there is a document that explains in further detail how to do a PSA blog. Um, but just to quickly summarize it, it needs to be between 250 and 300 words. And what you do is you preview the text, you summarize it, and most importantly, you analyze it. 
Um, so you choose one segment or element to analyze closely, and then this description tells you some things to think about when analyzing. Um, so for instance, this week's PSA blog response reading is to Ode to the Women on Long Island, um, which is the spoken word poem that we're about to go over in a few minutes. So I'll go into more detail when we do the sample PSA blog, but for now, just know that those instructions are on Blackboard if you want to do one for this week and have any questions. So this is for your reading chapter seven from the Everyday Writer, Critical Reading. Um, I pulled this quote because it really summarizes why we're focusing on critical reading and literacy so much. So reading critically has always meant questioning, commenting, analyzing, and reflecting thoughtfully on a text. But in a time of 24 seven newsfeed, misinformation, and fake news, critical reading demands defensive reading strategies that will help protect you from being manipulated by the text that you read. And what's most important is attention. So focusing intently and purposefully on any text you approach. So this is gonna be the main theme of this course is teaching you you guys how to read critically, how to analyze, um, and how to determine whether the texts that you're reading um, are fake news or not, or whether they're misinformation. So I trust that you guys are going to read this, but these are some of the bullet points that um, the chapter seven goes over. I bulleted them here because I want to make sure that you're going over them and connecting them to how you're going to do your discussion posts and your PSA blogs. So as you're doing the reading, I want you to think about doing these things. So reading collaboratively, reaching out to your classmates and um, sharing your responses to certain readings, um, considering the source. So really thinking about um, the author or sponsor and the underlying details of a text before you read it. Um, summarizing the main ideas, this is gonna be an important practice for you to do as you're doing your PSA blogs. So is analyzing re and reflecting on the text. Um, and what's really useful is 7G has a really detailed example of a USC student's critical reading of a text. So it shows how she summarizes, annotates, and critically reads Alison Bechtel's graphic novel, Fun Home, a family tragicomic. So I highly suggest reading over this carefully before doing your PSA blogs and discussion posts because it will show you what to, or what we're expecting you to do as you do your weekly responses and as you're doing the readings. So what to do with this info, um, why we're reading from the everyday writer and why it's so important is that throughout the semester, I want you guys to work smarter, not harder. So if you use these strategies when first reading a text and as you're reading it, this will significantly reduce the amount of work you have to do later and the amount of time that it takes you to complete these assignments. So annotating and summarizing as you go and um, doing all of these tips mentioned in chapter seven will prevent you from having to reread entire texts once you go back to do discussion posts on them. Um, and it will help you complete blogs and the discussion posts a lot faster because you're doing a lot of work at once rather than continuously rereading the same piece to do different things. Um, another important thing to remember is that you become better writers by becoming better readers. So you want to familiar, familiarize yourself with the practices of those you read and the things that we read in this course. And just by doing that, you're going to notice that your writing is going to change and it's going to reflect the practices of the people that you're reading. So Olivia Gatwood's Ode to the Women on Long Island is um, one of the readings for this week, and it's a spoken word poem. So I highlighted this specific quote from the biographical information at the beginning because it helps us do the first step of a PSA blog, which is to preview and ask questions about what we're expecting from the poem or from the reading. So it mentions that as an educator in sexual assault prevention and recovery, Gatwood's poetry often uses elements of humor and performance to introduce uncomfortable subject matter to her audiences. Um, so I did a practice here as you're reading the poem, highlight areas where you find the humor that they're talking about, but then underline particular lines and sentences and sections that address the uncomfortable subject matter of the poem, and then reflect and ask yourself, what is this uncomfortable subject matter and what is your experience with it? Or like, what do you think of it? 
These are the discussion questions that are posted at the end. I wanted to put these here and point out that these are a really good place to go to inspire your weekly responses and your PSA blogs. So if once you're done reading, you're kind of stumped on where to direct your response or where to start, check out these discussion questions at the bottom and they'll help inspire what you want to talk about in your discussion post. This is the link to the spoken word performance. Um, it's also in Blackboard, but I highly suggest listening to it um, and thinking about what your reaction is to the live performance of her reading it out loud versus when you read it to yourself on the page. So what I also wanted to show you guys is this is for you to read to yourself. This is in Blackboard under read and review. Um, this is why I mentioned earlier the detailed description of how to do the PSA blogs um, and how to write them specifically. So make sure that you read over this document. But I did also want to show you this. Um, this is an example. This should be on, so ignore those spelling errors. Um, this is an example of how you might construct your PSA blog. You don't need to do it in this format. It's just a guide. So preview, um, you can color code it like this if you want. A preview questions you might ask or ideas you might address concerning the title or the biographical information it gives. Any questions that you have um, just based on the author or the title of the poem. Um, things to expect from the reading before you even start it. The summaries, the short summaries um, that you do throughout the reading, you can do however you want. So if you want to do one big summary at the very end, you can. But for instance, in this example, um, we did short summaries below each stanza. So if you want to break the reading down into sections and then do short summaries as you go, you can do that too. And just remember, you can pause this video whenever you want to, if you want to read over this document. Um, slower than I'm going over it. But the most impart, important part is the analysis. So I did two separate options here because there is no one correct answer or one route to take when you're doing an analysis. This green one focuses on the trail of a fear of time passing to see what the poem says about that. So um, they highlighted in green all the areas of the poem that address that particular um, theme. The purple one focuses on what I mentioned earlier, which is the uncomfortable subject matter that she is referring to alongside the humor. So all the purple sections are places where I identified where they might be or where Gatwood might be alluding to this uncomfortable subject matter. So what you would do afterwards to finish your analysis is at the end, skip ahead and focus on those sections and then ask yourself, what to do with that analysis. So what is the uncomfortable subject matter? What does Gatwood have to say about it? What do the women on Long Island have to say about it? And what do you think is important about it? What is your reaction to it? So that is how you would do a PSA blog for the Ode to the Women on Long Island. In the Wednesday video, I'll go over some of the PSA blogs that you did, some of the routes that you took, go over some of your discussion responses for um, what you thought about it, and we'll go more into depth then. But then just a heads up for what to do for the rest of the week. On Wednesday, like I said, I'm going to upload a separate video for these two readings and then go over the literacy narrative um, assignment details. And just remember, if you do choose to do a PSA blog for this week, it is due tonight, August 24th by 11.59. Um, the document that I just showed, if you want to use some of those ideas to do your PSA blog, you can do so. Obviously, just don't copy exactly what it does. And this is your week two overview, just to remind you of the due dates. So your initial post is due Wednesday, August 26th by 11.59. Um, if you want to do it earlier you can, um, and then your responses are due Friday, August 28th. And then for your write and respond, this is where you'll submit your PSA blog if you do want to do one for this week. This is your prompt for your discussion. So this is going to be on the readings that we're going over on Wednesday. Um, so I'll post that video by the afternoon so that you can look over it and do your discussions by then. And then on Friday or when your responses to each other's posts are due.